This program is made possible by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. The grace of God, His unmerited favor, has released a gift called righteousness. It's a favor to you. It's not righteousness that you work for. It's righteousness that you received as a gift. So the key thing for us is to hold on to our identity. I'm the righteousness of God. I'm the righteousness of God. That is the primary attack of the devil. That's where he attacked Adam in the garden, attacked him where his identity was concerned. That's where he showed up with Jesus and attacked him uh, uh, where his identity is concerned. And now that's where he hoped to get success where you and I are concerned. Your mouth is your way out of your wilderness. Your mouth is your way out of your trouble. See, you already believe you're the righteousness of God, and you already receive all that grace is made available for you, but you're not going to see it manifested until you, who are the righteousness of God by faith, speak. I'm a world changer. This is Changing Your World with Creflo Dollar. Now from the World Dome in College Park, Georgia, here's Pastor Dollar with today's message. Do you ever feel like your life is spinning out of control? Like everything is closing in on you and there's nothing you can do about it? Well, there is something you can do about it. Jesus promised us his peace, which is security in the middle of chaos and turmoil. Peace means there's nothing missing, lacking, or broken in your life. But there's something you must understand in order to enjoy God's peace. And that's why I'm going to share with you today something that is absolutely going to hopefully give you a revelation of how to do just that. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. Verse 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith. What does justified mean? Declared righteous. So he says, being declared righteous by faith. Now notice, you're not declared righteous by your works. God did not declare you righteous because of your goody-goody things or because of your holy performance, because of your right works. You were declared righteous by faith. You've, made, you've been made righteous not by what you do, but you've been made righteous by what Jesus has already done. Amen? Amen. So being justified by faith, we have peace with God. So what happens now? When you believe that you are the righteousness of God, you have peace with God. When you believe that you have been made righteous by faith, you have peace with God. The peace of God, it, it, it's, it's two definitions I want you to carry. Number one, when you have peace, you have security in the midst of turmoil. All right, Number two, when you have peace, there is nothing missing and nothing broken in your life. Oh. He says that comes by realizing your real identity. That comes by realizing that I am the righteousness of God by faith. Say that out loud. I'm the righteousness of God by faith. Now, how many of you believe you're the righteousness of God? Well, he says now, when you really believe that, you have peace with God. So in the midst of turmoil, you don't panic. You don't get in fear because you're the righteousness of God and you have security in the midst of turmoil. Somebody says, well, what if I couldn't afford to pay my insurance payment? Jesus paid all the payments and you have security in the midst of turmoil. Not only that, because you believe you're the righteousness of God, there is nothing missing and nothing broken in your life. Your life is whole. So as the righteousness of God, you should be expecting you have the right to be whole in every area of your life. So when you see areas of your life that are not whole, you declare, I'm the righteousness of God. I have a right to be whole. I'm the righteousness of God. I have a right to have my bills paid. I'm the righteousness of God. I have a right to have my needs met. I'm the righteousness of God. I have a right. That's peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken in your life. I have that because of the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. Verse 2, Romans chapter 5, verse 2 says, Now, by whom also? We have access by faith. Now that I believe I'm the righteousness of God, I have access by faith. I believe that I'm the righteousness of God. I have access by faith into this unmerited favor. So now he says, you receiving that you're the righteousness of God will grant you access into this unmerited favor. Access into this undeserved favor. Access. See, you can't get access by your works. 
You can't get access by your performance and your goody goody deeds. He says, but if you'll believe you're the righteousness of God by faith, then by faith you'll be granted access into this unmerited favor. Amen. Amen. Wherein we stand. Say out loud, I stand, I stand in, grace. in grace as the righteousness of God. Righteousness. I, have I have a right to stand, to stand. in this unmerited favor. This unmerited favor. Wherein we stand. He says, and then get ready, he says, and rejoice in hope. Hope is an earnest expectation. And rejoice in the hope. The hope of what? Of the glory of God. Oh, you, listen to what God said. He said, get ready, get ready to rejoice because you're getting ready to see the manifestations because you've been granted access through the righteousness of God. The day that a man believes and receives he's the righteousness of God, he's granted access into that grace. And he says, rejoice because you will receive the manifestation of that. Amen. Now, move down to verse 17. Verse 17, Romans 5, 17, and then let's look at verse 20. Let's read 5, 17, and then verse 21. 5, 17 says, For if by one man's offense death reigned or ruled by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Now, you see what he said? He said, Now they which receive a whole lot of unmerited favor, now, I need you to do that right now. Say, I receive, I receive a, whole a whole lot of unmerited favor. Say it again. I receive, I receive a, whole a whole lot of unmerited favor. I tell you, tomorrow when you wake up, you can expect to, re to see a whole lot of unmerited favor. You receive a whole lot of unmerited favor. All right? A whole lot. Not one. Somebody said, well, I had one favor last year sometime. No, he said, I want you to have a whole lot of it. A whole lot of unmerited favor. He says, now watch this. Now, if you'll receive that, and not, not only that, but if you'll receive the gift of righteousness. So favor, the grace of God, and the righteousness of God are tied together. The grace of God, his unmerited favor, has released a gift called righteousness. It's a favor to you. It's not righteousness that you work for. It's righteousness that you received as a gift. So now watch this. He says, if you receive the favor that produced the gift of righteousness, you're going to reign in life. The Amplified says you're going to rule in life like a king. How? He says, the day you believe I'm the righteousness of God, and by, because I'm the righteousness of God, I have a right to be healed, you will rule over sickness. I'm the righteousness of God, I have a right to have abundance, you will rule over lack. I'm the righteousness of God, I have a right to be delivered, you will rule over any kind of addictions and, and all that kind of stuff. But he says, the grace of God will not be able to show up in the life of a person who won't receive the gift of righteousness. Because you need to know that you're righteous in order to see this grace operate in your life. Look at verse 21. Look at verse 21. That as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign or rule. How? Through righteousness. Grace will reign and rule through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ. So the key thing for us is to hold on to our identity. I'm the righteousness of God. I'm the righteousness of God. That is the primary attack of the devil. That's where he attacked Adam in the garden, attacked him where his identity was concerned. That's where he showed up with Jesus and attacked him uh, uh, where his identity is concerned. And now that's where he hoped to get success where you and I are concerned. He wants to attack your identity. Your identity is I'm the righteousness of God. You are, if you hold on to that, you're going to see grace operate through, through the righteousness of God. Now, you got to hold on to that. you got to make your mind up, I'm righteous today, tomorrow, when it's good, when it's bad, when it's up, when it's down, I'm the righteousness of God. Let's do a little test. Who are you right now? Who will you be in the morning? Who will you be when you sin? Who will you be when you make a bad decision? Who will you be when you're not doing righteous? See, if you hold on to your identity, your identity will correct your behavior. 
But if the enemy can get you to turn loose of your identity, then you'll never see what your righteousness can produce because the favor of God is going to show up through your identity called righteousness. It's going to show up through the gift of righteousness. And the devil, he don't want you to know that. He wants you to think, oh, my God, you know, I'm just terrible. I'm not the righteousness of God. How can I be righteous? And then grace stops right there. It can't rule unless it finds someone who will receive the gift. He gave you the gift so he can keep giving you more. Say out loud, I'm the righteousness of God. Say it again, I'm the righteousness of God. I rule in life. Sickness doesn't rule in life. You rule in life. The righteous rule in life. Poverty doesn't rule in life. The righteous rule in life. Say it again, I'm the righteousness of God. I rule in life. Ooh. Say it again, I'm the righteousness of God. I rule over sickness. I rule over, over disease. I rule over turmoil. I rule over a bad economy. I rule over problems in my marriage. Now, not you exactly, but because you're righteous, your righteousness will cause you to rule over all those situations. Oh, hold on to it, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on to it, praise God. Amen. Now. Let's go to Romans chapter 10, verse 6. I'm laying a foundation for what we're going to preach on today. Romans chapter 10 and verse 6. Now, one more time. Who are you? By your works or by faith? Okay, so what did you do to be righteous? How, did you be, how were you made righteous? By Jesus Christ, amen. Take Jesus out the picture, what you left with? Hell. Yeah, absolutely. You take Jesus out of the picture, that's exactly what you left with, hell. All right, verse 6. But the righteousness, which is of faith, stop. Who's he talking about there? So that scripture is talking to who? The righteousness, which is of faith. And that, that's you, right? Say, that's me. And so the scripture getting ready to talk about you. He getting ready to tell you something about you. But the righteousness, which is of faith, Say the next word, speak it. So we who have received the gift of righteousness, we are not to stay silent. Why? Because your mouth is your way out of your wilderness. Your mouth is your way out of your trouble. See, you already believe you're the righteousness of God, and you already receive all that grace has made available for you, but you're not going to see it manifested until you, who are the righteousness of God by faith, speak. Turn your neighbor and say, it's time to talk. Yeah, it's time to talk. You see, when you open your mouth up, you open the door for the sun to come in. But now he's going to tell you, you just can't be saying anything. Now notice, he says, the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. So again, getting ready to tell us what we, what we should be majoring on. He said, first of all, say not in your heart. Now he's telling you about your heart. Say not in your heart who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from, the, from above. He says, you don't need to be saying that. You're not righteous. If, if, you know, you got to get Christ to come down for you to be righteous. He says he already made you righteous. Verse 7. Uh, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. He says, no, don't say that. Verse 8. But what saith it? He says, now listen, the word is not thee, even in your mouth and it is in your heart. Now listen to me. When you got born again, your, your spirit is full of the word of God. Whatever your heart is full of will eventually spill over into your mouth. Whatever your heart is full of will eventually get in your mouth. The word is not the even in your mouth, and it is even in your heart. It's in your mouth because whatever you're full of in your heart is getting in your mouth. So your mouth, your confession, and your believing, they're connected. Your confession and your believing, it's connected. He said, that is the word of faith. Now, I, I, I pause and I said, the word of faith. Well, what is it that I have faith in? Come on. I'm the righteousness of God by faith. 
That is the central idea of this covenant of grace. That is the central idea of this New Testament. The word of faith is the word that I have. I am the righteousness of God by faith. That is the word of faith that we believe. Now notice he said, he said that word which we preach, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, he said you're going to be saved, delivered, healed, prosperous, whole, preserved, and all of the finished works of Jesus Christ. But now look at verse 10. Here we go. For with the heart man believeth unto what? So with your heart you to believe what? So, huh? So with the heart you believe what? So with the heart you believe what? With the heart you believe what? How many believe you're the righteousness of God? All right, now watch this. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Now, that word salvation, don't let it fool you. It's not just born again. And that's why we only use these, two, this, this, these scriptures to talk about. You only saw them when you talk about somebody getting born again. It's so much bigger than born again. That word salvation comes from a Greek word, two Greek words, sozo, another Greek word, soteria. And it means not only born again, but it means preservation and holy, wholeness and, and deliverance and, 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 and prosperity and peace. It, 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 it carries the entire finished works of Jesus Christ. He says, so if you believe in your heart, come on, I'm the righteousness of God. And if you confess with your mouth, watch this, I'm the righteousness of God, and I have a right to whatever part of the finished works. I have a right to healing. I have a right to preservation. I'm the righteousness of God. I have a right to abundance. I'm the righteousness of God. I have a right to be delivered from that addiction. I'm the righteousness of God. I have a right to be peaceful. I'm the righteousness of God. I have a right to be loving. I'm the righteousness of God. See, you're expressing what is in your heart, then you are opening your mouth, and you are making what salvation has already provided for you. Amen. Amen. Uh, watch this. Say this, out. Say this with me. I'm the, of God. I'm the righteousness of God. I have a right, have a right. to have abundance, have abundance in every area of my life. See, you ain't got to con nobody. You ain't got to manipulate nobody. You ain't got to kiss up to nobody. You are the righteousness of God, and your mouth will make anything that grace of God has already made available. Say it again. I'm the righteousness of God, and I have the blood-bought right. See, you know how we are. We got to put some adjectives in there. I got the blood-bought Jesus right to have abundance. But you don't have a right to have nothing you don't speak. Charles Capps was, uh, he's a, he was a farmer when he was alive. And uh, he was working on this particular harvest, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't work. And he got to speaking all bad over the harvest and talking all bad over the harvest. And, and uh, finally, he got a hold of it that if he said, he said the Lord spoke to him, said Brother Hagin wrote a little book called Right Believing. And he, he, he said he read in that book, he says if you believe right, you'll think right, and you'll confess right. He said, but if you believe wrong, you will think wrong, and you'll confess wrong. And so he changed this confession because he said, I believe I'm going to have a great harvest. He began to think that way, and then he began to confess based on what he believed because he realized, wait a minute, I'm the righteousness of God. I have a right to have a good harvest. And he said, the Lord spoke to him. He said, Charles, I want you to go tell my people. I said that they can have what they say, but they keep saying what they have. And as long as they keep saying what they have, I can't change it. He said, get them to say what they don't have. Say what they don't have. Stop saying what you do have. You'll have what you say, but you keep saying what you have. Quit saying what you have. Yeah, but let's be real, Pastor Dollar. I'm being real. 
You've been stuck in that same sorry situation for the last 20 years because you've been saying what you have for the last 20 years. And I'm asking you today to stop saying that. Be believe that I'm the righteousness of God. And because you believe that you're the righteousness of God, open your mouth and say what you have. Don't say what you see. Say what you have based on what you have in the righteousness of God. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Uh, you remember in Genesis chapter uh, 1, Genesis chapter 1, to, uh, verse 2, the Bible says darkness was on the face of the water. And then, and then verse 3 said, and God said, let there be light. And he said, and, and there was light. See, God saw darkness, but he said what? God didn't say what he saw. He saw darkness, but he said what? And then there was what? Light. But when was there light? When he said. But even though there was darkness, he said. Light. And there was what? Light. Even though there was darkness, he said. Light. And there was what? Light. Even though your wallet is empty, you don't say empty, you say. And then you'll have what? Even though your marriage look crazy right now, you don't say crazy. You say what? Good marriage. And you have what? Now, why would you say that? Because I'm the righteousness of God. I am now convinced I have a right to that. I don't have to tolerate things that are not in my bills of right. I am the righteousness of God. I have a right to have what I have a right to. So if I see something that's not in my bill of rights, I'm not going to say it. I don't. That ain't mine. Quit saying what you see. Well, you know, Brother Dollar, I'm as broke as, as the Ten Commandments that Moses dropped on Mount Sinai, and, and you, and then you, and, and, and brokenness was. <laughs> he said light, and there was light. You said brokenness, and there was brokenness. Turn your neighbor and say, stop saying what you see. Stop saying what you see. Glory be to God. Now, Here's what I want you to get here. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, I am saying to you, versus what religion has taught you, listen to, to me carefully now. I think I used last week the illustration, somebody says, well, I'm a, I, I need a car. And so you want to do it by faith, you say. And then you think, well, you know, I got to believe in my heart. I got a car. I believe in my heart. I got a car. I believe in my heart. I got a car. I believe in my heart. I got a car. I believe in my heart. I got a car. And you're, going on, you're working on saying this a thousand times because you, that, see, that's, that's self-effort. You, you believe that if I say this long enough, then I'm going to have this. And what happens? Somebody says, well, I actually got my car. Yeah, but it was a faith mistake, and you have no idea how to get it again. <laughs> that's the only thing you ever got by faith. Probably because somebody was praying for you or just plain mercy of God. But that's not what he said to believe in your heart. He said, believe in your heart, I'm the righteousness of God. And confess with your mouth, I have a right to have a car. Somebody said, well, what's the difference? See, you're spending all your time trying to believe in your heart that you got the car, and you don't even believe you have a right to it. You're walking around condemned. You're walking around full of shame. You're walking around full of condemnation. And yet you're trying to operate faith, talking about, I believe I got a car, I believe I got a car. I don't believe I'm the righteousness of God because of what I did last week. But I'm going to use my faith to get a car. No, I got to believe I'm righteous. I got to believe I'm righteous, and righteousness becomes the force that will cause this. See, righteousness, a righteousness identity will attract everything that you need. When you believe you are right with God, you have to